reflective comment from President-elect Obama, given uh, the precedent of his uh, comments on uh, Georgia? Well, I think a lot of people would like Obama to speak, but you have to remember what Obama did in the run-up to his um, selection as president. Uh, he went before the APAC uh, people. He gave a groveling, obsequious speech. He tried to be as Zionist as the next man, even more Zionist than John McCain. Um, Barack Obama really is not in a position to say anything. He has surrounded himself with uh, the Kutniks, with people from the Clinton administration. Barack Obama has been almost completely emasculated as a president, and he hasn't even taken office yet. What about, what about, uh, Greg Felt, no, what about those who say that uh, he's in a difficult position because if he says anything should be done, he can't, uh, he can't actually get anything done? Actually, I should remind our audience that we're seeing live pictures from Gaza, and uh, there is a land attack in Khan Yunus, the, sec the largest city in the southern Gaza Strip, and as you can see, smoke uh, over the city there in your picture live. But so, sorry, Greg Felton, what about the fact that uh, if he says anything, he's powerless to do anything? Well, if he said anything, he right now doesn't have the power. He's not effectively sworn in. But that doesn't mean he couldn't say something to give Americans and Arabs around the world the confidence that when he does take off, things will be different. Uh, yes, you're right, he is not in power, but that doesn't mean he has to run away and hide. I mean, it's rather shameful that there seems to be no statesmen left in America. People are simply only afraid of their careers. And uh, Barack Obama, I think, if I were to speak with him, I would probably find a man really almost afraid to speak his mind. And, and I think a lot of people are sensing that. What they about those who say, well, what about those who say if President-elect Obama said something, he could actually endanger more civilians in Gaza as the Israelis would feel they, they better get the, jo the job done before the inauguration on the 20th of January. Well, that's a very good question because I think a good argument could be made that this particular assault is being done at a time before Obama does take office. Uh, it's hard to see how much more damage Israel could do to Gaza. It's hard to see how much worse things could be. Uh, I think, if nothing else, Obama could condemn the loss of civilian life. He could condemn the, the disproportionate use of Israeli force. He doesn't have to condemn Israel outright, but he could at least say something reassuring, at least to convince the world that he's actually paying attention. I mean, to all the world, it looks like he's trying his very best to avoid uh, paying attention. And that does not send a good signal. Of course, yeah, the Israelis know what they're getting with Barack Obama. They're getting a man who is educated, he is informed, he is a capable leader, which is everything George Bush is not. And that means he poses an existential threat to Israel, because if you have somebody in the White House who is intelligent, he runs the risk of thinking for himself. So on the one hand, you're going to deal with Obama when he gets into office, or you could deal with him a few weeks before he's sworn in. And you're going to be sworn in in about two and a half weeks. A reminder and to I our viewers, a quick reminder to our viewers, we're watching live pictures from Gaza. There's an Israeli incursion into uh, the eastern district of Abbasan in Khan Yunus. That's the first time that's happened. Uh, but uh, Greg Felton, one of uh, President-elect Obama's big corporate donors was Lockheed Martin, the people that make the F-16s that drop these missiles out of the sky onto Gaza, uh, Gaza's densely populated uh, areas. Uh, tell us about, because we can see smoke rise up from the Gaza Strip right now, live pictures from Gaza. Uh, what are these missiles? What are they made of? Uh, these missiles Lockheed's dropping, um, I'm not really familiar with, the, with, the, with their makeup, so I'm perhaps not the best one to speak to. But it is quite true that the, the American defense industry, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, uh, Martin Marietta, are very closely tied in with the Jewish, with JINSA, the Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs. And so when Lockheed Martin gives money to Barack Obama, it is somehow connected with the very strong infiltration of the Israel lobby in the United States. If Lockheed Martin is supporting Barack Obama, then Barack Obama pretty much has to do what Lockheed Martin wants it to do. And so we have a terrible scenario where we have a president, Mr. Obama, not really able to do anything because of the people he has around him and the people he's beholden to. Well, he All I can tell you is that there have been 
phosphorus shells I've been seeing fired over the Gaza Strip. Depleted uranium has been found, according to Norwegian doctors, as reported by Press TV. Uh, I, I cannot imagine anything more horrific uh, going on in Gaza now, worse than the, the Warsaw Ghetto in, in, in Poland, which even during the Nazis was not bombed from the air, to my knowledge. I mean, I, I cannot believe that this is happening in the 21st century. We are supposed to be in a society that evolved from the war crimes of the 1930s and 40s. And uh, what, is, what are other governments in your hemisphere doing? I didn't really hear much uh, from the Canadian government. There were some calls from uh, Latin American governments. We're not hearing uh, the worldwide. Well, the Canadian government is doing very little. As a matter of fact, it's doing everything it can to support the American position, which is, of course, Israel's position. Uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper is supporting America's blocking of uh, peace initiatives led by Libya, humanitarian aid relief efforts. Uh, Stephen Harper here is not a popular man. He has a constituency that is mostly right-wing, Christian, pro-Israel, pro-big business, and he's widely seen by many Canadians as really uh, an instrument of the United States. Michael Ignatius, the newly elected, or I should say appointed leader of the Liberal Party, is similarly disinterested in finding a way out of this. He, like everybody else, blames Hamas for the attacks, uh, even though Hamas had nothing to do with it, and the attack was six months in the planning. And even uh, Ifrahim Halevi, a former head of Mossad, admits that the Hamas rockets were not the reason for the attack. So the Canadian government... I think it's fair to say it's been so co-opted by the United States and Israel that anything coming out of Ottawa really should not be taken at face value. It should be seen as part of the uh, collaborationist mentality that we have here in Canada. Okay, Greg that Fulton, thing is we have we'll uh, hopefully go back to you for more analysis as the... Uh as the war continues, a uh, reminder to our viewers, you were watching live pictures there from Gaza because Israeli tanks have been firing cannons and machine guns supported by uh, Apache helicopter gunships uh, into the city of Khan Yunis. That's uh, the largest town in the southern Gaza Strip, and uh, we're only slowly getting uh, information from there. We'll obviously be going back to Yusuf uh, El Halu, our correspondent there, uh, as we get more details. But uh, over to Kaveh. Uh, organization among many that has uh, been condemning uh, the attacks by the Israelis on Gaza's Amnesty International. It's called on the UN Security Council to condemn the ongoing Israel military uh, aggression against Gaza. Malcolm Smart, director of the Middle East and North Africa program, said that the UN Security Council must not remain silent and should immediately take action to ease the humanitarian situation there. He also called on the Security Council to consider the deployment of international monitors to the territory. An earlier Security Council statement was blocked by the United States on Saturday. Well, joining us now is an international...